Could Los Angeles Rams defensive tackle Aaron Donald win defensive player of the year for the fourth time in his career, being the first player in NFL history to do that? Well, we'll see. Also, will the Los Angeles Rams tailor their offense to a little bit of a different degree, or are they going to continue along with what they've kind of put on tape over the past few weeks? We're going to find out on this episode of the Locked on Rams podcast. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Rams Nation, what is going on? As always, it is your boy, your host, Sosa Kermendras. I'm a fantasy analyst at PFF and your host here at the Locked on Rams podcast, your number one daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Rams and part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you guys so much for always making us your first daily listen every single day. I want to tell you guys about On Location. It is the official hospitality partner of the NFL it's the only place to score a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package. Visit onlocationexp.com slash SB56 for more information or search Super Bowl on location. Now, this is our final episode prior to game day. This is Friday. You guys know how we typically like to do Fridays around here. It is a Mailbag Friday episode. You guys shot over a bunch of good questions to me. So thank you guys so much before we dive into it for always sending over some really good questions. This is the last one for the Los Angeles Rams. Get ready to take on the Seattle Seahawks. And this never-ending COVID list has expanded to 25 players, I think it is at this point, 25 or 26 players. Yes, more players have been added to this list. Ed Rusher, Von Miller, amongst many more. So we'll see what happens with this game. Maybe the Rams and the Seahawks will have their game rescheduled to a different date, which probably makes sense at this point, and will play at a different time. I think that feels like probably makes more sense than it doesn't, but we know the NFL. It absolutely comes down to the bottom line, which is the dollar, the almighty dollar. And I don't think they're going to try to resume this game or reschedule it to a different time. So we'll see. I'm as clueless as everyone else is. As of right now, as of this recording, they will be playing the game the same day that it's supposed to be played on Sunday. But of course, things can not change. So we're going to put that aside for now. We will dive into this mailbag and we'll start right from the top. The first question is from at Nash Delirium. He said, is the six offensive lineman something that was a result of Tyler Higby being out or might we see more of it moving forward? And ironically enough, the Rams actually did this going back to that Jacksonville Jaguars game. So it was before even Tyler Higby was out. And I guess that means that this is sort of part of this new offense. And I think they're still trying to figure out you know, what's the best balance in terms of six offensive linemen, 12 personnel, 13 personnel, 11 personnel, shotgun, empty, all these different things. I still really think they're trying to figure out what is the best mix and mash that we can kind of put together that's going to confuse defensive coordinators, but at the same time, give us a legitimate identity. And I really like that idea because we talked about it throughout November. They got stale on offense. They really did. They did a lot of this gun shotgun empty kind of stuff and 11 personnel and they eventually got figured out and they could not do anything offensively they sucked for a few weeks and they put together a horrendous month but since then they've kind of 180 to the point where they became a run heavy team against the jacksonville jaguars six offensive linemen 12 13 personnel jumbo packages all that good stuff then you go to arizona some shades of similar kind of play there and now it's like you know, what are they? Well, we know that they've used six offensive linemen for two weeks prior to Higby being ruled out. So I don't think it's necessarily attached or related to Tyler Higby, which is a good thing. I think they should try to utilize different personnel packages, different kinds of, you know, offensive formations and different kinds of plays. This is the best use case for this offense. I really do believe that the more you can throw in and not confuse your own players, but confuse defensive coordinators, the more successful you will be. I want Matthew Stafford under center. I want the Rams running the football. I want all of these things to be a big and integral part of this offense. 
And so I think they will continue to use six offensive linemen, but it really remains to be seen in terms of how much they will, right? Will it be two plays, five plays, 10 plays, 16 plays like they did against the Jaguars? We'll see, but definitely not 16. I think that's a little bit too much. You know, maybe somewhere in that three to five or three to seven kind of range. I think that makes a lot of sense for this offense. Moving to the next one here from my guy at Rand with the game. He said, do you think Aaron Donald has a chance to win defensive player of the year? And I do. I honestly do. But it's really going to come down to what he can do over these last few games. Because right now, he's really behind. I mean, you're looking at guys like Miles Garrett, uh, TJ Watt, and maybe even Micah Parsons. I think those are probably the three guys right now that not necessarily they're you know, ahead of Aaron Donald, maybe two of them are, I don't know if Micah Parsons is just yet, but two of them probably are three of them might be. And Aaron Donald has to be in that conversation. But right now, TJ Watt sitting, I believe at 16 sacks, miles Garrett slightly behind Aaron Donald only has 10. And at the end of the day, they always look at these kind of statistics. And so, you know, we'll see how Aaron Donald can end this season. If he can get on a bit of a hot streak here, and he always seems to do really good against the Seattle Seahawks. If he can put together, you know, a two, maybe a three sack performance, we might be looking at a guy that can start to creep towards that DPOY award. The one thing I do want to mention, it feels like there could be some voter fatigue, right? We talk about guys like LeBron James in the NBA trying to win MVP or Tom Brady even trying to win MVP in the NFL. You get that voters fatigue where it's like, this guy could legitimately win it every single year. And I think you could make the case that they deserve to win it every single year, but that's not how the award works. They're never going to do it like that. And so I feel like at this point, maybe we're starting to see some of that voters fatigue in, but at the same time, I will say he is the best player in football. I'm not hundred percent sure that he should win the award right now. Again, We'll see what happens throughout these last few weeks. If he can really get it together and put together a strong stretch to the point where, you know, we're talking about a guy that has 16, 18, 20 sacks at the end of the season, then there's certainly a chance. But as of right now, you know, I think there is a chance, but I certainly don't think he's the favorite. It's really, really going to depend on how we can finish this season. Now, moving on to the final question here from at Movingo1983, he said, do you think that the last couple of weeks shows that the depth of the roster is much better than the national media suggests? And I tend to think that that's always kind of been the case here. You know, I know I understand how the Rams kind of get bagged on here. You know, they trade away these first round picks and they spend a lot of money on the top heavy roster guys like Jalen Ramsey, all that kind of stuff. I understand it. Right. And they are a top heavy roster. That's just the reality. But at the same time, they got guys like Sebastian Joseph Day, who they draft in the sixth round. They got guys like Greg Gaines who are sitting on the bench ready to play. And then you look at guys, you know, on the offensive line at center, Brian Allen, you lose him to an injury. Coleman Shelton steps in. You lose right tackle Rob Havenstein to an injury. You got Joseph Nopum stepping in. The Rams have a lot of depth. Yeah, at certain positions, if you get hit with two, three, four injuries like they are at wide receiver right now, you're always going to have trouble overcoming that. It doesn't matter if you're the Rams or somebody else, but as of right now, I think their depth is pretty solid around the board. I mean, this is a team that doesn't have issues stacking up talent at the end of the day. And when you look at certain positions, it really doesn't matter where. It feels like they could have a guy that could pretty much step up at every single position. And they have felt, you know, the brunt of some of those losses at cornerback, at offensive line, now at wide receiver, tight end. And yet they still find guys to step up do their job, and maybe it's not, you know, spectacular. You look at tight end, Kendall Blaine. No, he is not Tyler Hibby. No, he's not, you know, Antonio Gates in his prime, but he's good enough to get the job done. And the Rams find a way to find these guys. At the end of the day, I think they do have more depth than most people would suggest. Now, you know, us, we're in Rams circle, so we kind of see it at a better eye, I would say, than most people outside of this circle. But at the same time, those people – the way they look at the Rams, I think the Rams certainly have a lot more depth than those people would suggest. Now, in just a second here, we're going to dive into some of this Vaughn Miller talk. Is Coleman Shelton a potential upgrade over Brian Allen at the center position? In just a second, make sure to tune back into that. Of course, you guys can follow us on Twitter at QB's MEP, at Locked on Rams, and on YouTube at Locked on Rams. And as I mentioned at the top of the episode, 
Super Bowl 56 at SoFi Stadium is less than 100 days away and on location, the official hospitality partner of the NFL is the only place to score a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package. You can select exactly where you want to sit and choose from elite experiences featuring an exclusive pregame celebration with NFL legends, five-star LA hotels, and food by the great Wolfgang Puck. Visit onlocationexp.com slash SB56 for more information or search Super Bowl on location. That's onlocationexp.com slash SB56 or search Super Bowl on location. And as we know, nobody plays daily fantasy sports to lose when he feels so much better, but traditional fantasy sports are a long-term losing proposition because you never know who or what you're up against. Stat Hero is the first of its kind in the daily fantasy sports department and platform where it's you versus the house in head-to-head fantasy matchups with the winner taking all. And here's the crazy part. Stat Hero shows you their lineups before you play and you can handpick the team that you want to face one-on-one. Why is that? Well, because you do not have to compete against thousands of experts or unknowns. Stat Hero puts you in control of your fate. With Stat Hero, you're in control of the stakes. You decide how much you're going to play for. And Stat Hero has no choice but to take it because they're daring you to beat them. Sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on. Use the promo code locked on for a 100% match. Stathero.com slash locked on. Promo code locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Now, thank you guys so much for always making us your first daily listen here every single day at the Locked On Rams podcast. We're going to pick up right with where we left off. The next question from at G Poolage 88. He said, Season's almost over. What are the odds that Cam Akers actually returns? If so, is there a target date he needs to be activated for roster reasons prior to the playoffs? Now, in terms of what are the chances this guy comes back, I tend to think that the Rams should take a cautious approach because I don't know that Cam Akers really makes a huge difference to this team coming off of that Achilles, right? A healthy Cam Akers, sure. I think this guy could certainly make the running game a lot more productive, could make the offense a lot better, and could probably keep them ahead of chains while at the same time creating more explosive plays than everyone else in that running back room. But at the same time, now you look at it from the other perspective, this guy's coming off a torn Achilles, and we're not talking about, you know, 14 or 16 months of recovery time. We're talking about, you know, seven months or six months where, you're really putting this guy in a position to potentially get injured again. I don't know that it's smart. I really, really don't. At the end of the day, the Rams and their doctors know more than I do. So if they feel comfortable putting this guy out on the field, I'm sure that he's good to go. But at the same time, it's something that is super concerning to me because this is a player that I really think the Rams can build around moving forward and not just look at it very short-sighted in terms of, you know, what can this guy bring to the table in the playoffs, but at the same time, when do they activate him? I'm not really certain. I think that they can pretty much activate him whenever they want. The NFL consistently changes these rules. It's hard to know. You got the short-term IR, long-term IR, putting guys on IR, bringing them back. It's hard to know. I think at this point, you can pretty much bring anyone back at any time and they can't play for you. So it could be week 17, week 18, and the Rams could bring Akers back and he should, theoretically speaking, be able to start for you. But That might be too early. I'm not really certain. You know, I'm kind of spitballing here. Great player, great talent. I just don't know that it makes a lot of sense for the Rams to rush this guy back just yet. Moving on to the next one here from my guy at Will Carella. He said, what do you think is the best way to involve Justin Hollins now that we have Leonard Floyd and Von Miller at outside linebacker? Is there any chance that Coleman Shelton is an upgrade over Brian Allen? Now we'll start with the outside linebacker room here. You know, I seen Justin Hollins take a few reps at inside linebacker this past game, and that's just not his best spot. It really isn't. This guy needs to rush the passer. That's my opinion here. He's not terrible at, you know, covering running backs out of the backfield, but it was so evident to me that James Conner was giving him a lot of issues just trying to cover. Like he just cannot do it in space. And that's not fair to him to be able to ask, you know, him to do that. That's just not fair. I think 
yeah, you know, this guy might be the third or, you know, fourth best edge rusher on the team. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's teams that have four, five, even six guys that can rush the passer. The Rams should certainly be one of those teams. What's wrong with that? I would rather, you know, have this guy line up at edge, rotate consistently, get everybody fresh, get everybody feeling good, and have these guys playing at 100% for the 30, 40 snaps, whatever they play, as opposed to having one guy play 65 snaps and give you half effort. Like, I think you put this guy back at edge and he'll be perfectly fine there. Don't think off-ball linebacker is his best spot. Moving to the center spot there, I still think Brian Allen's better. I really do. I think this guy's better as a run blocker, significantly better in that regard. And even in pass, bro, I definitely think he's a little bit better as well. So Coleman Shelton, shout out to him for being able to step up in the past two games as a starting center, basically, for two games now. But at the same time, there's a reason Brian Allen is the starter. I will still lean that way. I think this guy's been really solid all season. Moving on to the next one and the final one in this segment from my guy at Mario Alvarez 28. He said, is there any news on Traven Howard? There is no news. I wish I could give you an update right now. This is a guy that everyone who's listened to this podcast dating back to the offseason knows. I was high on Traven Howard. I really, really liked what he brought to the table. I thought this was a guy that he's not the best run stuffer. That's not what he does best. This is a former college safety who was transitioned into linebacker, but that pretty much means that He's probably faster than most linebackers. He's got better coverage skills. And we've seen that in the past, a little bit in the preseason, a little bit in the regular season, a few seasons ago. And I would have loved to seen him, but this guy was placed on IR. He had some sort of an injury. I can't recall what it was now. Might have been an upper body. I can't exactly recall, but no update. Absolutely no update whatsoever. He wasn't brought back on to the 53-man roster, as far as I know, which is unfortunate because it seems like right now, the Rams don't have that much in terms of their inside linebacker room. They have, you know, their starters, Troy Reader, Ernest Jones, and a guy like Christian Roseboom. But other than that, I'm not sure that they really have anyone else. But at the end of the day, they feel like they have enough versatility in that room where they can take guys like Justin Hollins, who we mentioned a few minutes ago, move him to off-ball linebacker and get a few snaps like that. So in terms of Trayvon Howard, no updates. It's very unfortunate. This was a guy I was really excited to see this season, but didn't even get to play, so it stinks on his behalf, but I think at some point he will be back, and he should be back on the Rams roster next season. Now, with just a second here, we're going to dive into some of the free agency questions going into next season. Is cornerback Darius Williams going to be back with this team? We'll find out in just a second here. Make sure to tune back in next week on Monday when we recap the Los Angeles Rams Seattle Seahawks contest in week 15. As far as I know, they will be playing that game prior to any kind of rescheduling issues. Now, if you guys want to get in on some of the betting action on that game, go check out betonline.ag. They have you covered all season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues its march towards the playoffs. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all these sports action this season. So go ahead to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. All you have to do, just use the promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From football to basketball, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait. Make sure to take advantage right now of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. And you guys have heard me talk about the Built Bar on this podcast many times times the goaded protein bar this holiday season grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better it is better than a candy bar because yes it tastes like one but at the same time you do not have to feel guilty after you consume a built bar like you do when you consume a candy bar because the built bar low in calories low in fat low in sugar low in net carbs, and it's high in protein. So not only do you get the good flavor, but you also get the healthy component here. That is the best combo you could ever ask for. There's a bunch of different flavors. So regardless of what you like, I am 100% sure you will find something that you enjoy. Raspberry, mint brownie, cherry, double chocolate, cookies and cream, peanut butter brownie, you guys know this is a coconut guy here. I love coconut and chocolate, the best combination ever invented. I don't care that the haters do not like it. Built Bar 
gives you that extra fuel you need. I know a lot of you guys, December 24th, you're waiting specifically for that day to go do your Christmas shopping. Myself too, all right? We're procrastinators. That's how we like to do it. If that's you and that is me, take a built bar with you. Go put one you know, in your jacket, in your pocket, in your purse, whatever the case is, in your car. It will help fuel you for the rest of that shopping trip, I promise you. And if you don't like some of these protein bars, you want something different, they got marshmallow treats there as well. They're a little bit different. They're called Built Bar Puffs and different flavor profiles, different texture profiles. I've tried them. They sent me a package. Super, super delicious. The lemon dip cheesecake is my favorite in my opinion. Super, super good. I mean, this tastes amazing and very, very different from their protein bars as well. If you guys want to try and check it out, go to built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Dot com And thank you guys so much for always making us your first daily listen here at Locked on Rams. For your second daily listen, go check out Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q, with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. Now we're going to pick up with where we left off here with the final few questions of this Mailbag Friday. Thank you guys so much for sending these questions in. The next one from at... Ram fan Ashton one. He said, after seeing the roster develop this year, which position do you see us drafting first next year? I think halfback or cornerback. And I would tend to agree. I think cornerback is a really good one because you talk about Darius Williams. This is a guy that is a free agent in March and he might not get, you know, a crazy offer, but at the same time, the Rams only have about five, five and a half million dollars in cap space right now. And that puts them in a very tough spot. So with that being said, I wouldn't be shocked at all if this guy ends up walking. And if that's the case, do you really feel comfortable with Robert Rochelle or David Long or Dante Dion or some of these other guys as your cornerback two or cornerback three? I don't know. This position is very valuable. And in my opinion, it would make a lot of sense to invest in it, even if you do feel good at your cornerback spot. So I would tend to agree. I think it's cornerback. It might be something else like offensive line, depending on what happens, right? Because Austin Corbett, a guy that is a free agent upcoming as well, you know, it's hard to say. It really depends on what the Rams can do in terms of how much cap space can they open and who do they prioritize in bringing back. It's really hard to say right now. But in my opinion, cornerback and then offensive line. The next one from at Joe Ram 13, he said, with the NFL having a salary cap of over 200 million next season, do you see the Rams signing Von Miller, OBJ, or both or neither? Also, will the Rams sign Matthew Stafford to a five-year deal after this season? Now, I've answered this question in the past, so we'll keep it short. I tend to think that Von Miller will be back just because of what the Rams traded for him. You can't trade a second and a third round pick for a guy that walks, you know, nine games later that would be so so bad for the rams you can't afford to do that and this guy wants to win a ring again and the rams are in a good spot to try and provide that so i tend to think that von miller will be back i also tend to believe that obj will be a one-year rental again he might be back i don't know for sure but you have robert woods you have cooper cup you have van jefferson i think you're pretty loaded at this position and you have a lot of money issues on your roster i don't know that you can afford to spend it on a wide receiver four so I would say Von Miller will be back most likely. OBJ most likely won't be back. And in terms of Matthew Stafford, I don't know what kind of extension they give him, but this is the final year of his contract as well. And the Rams do need to open up cap space to try and bring some of these players back. So with that being said, I'm fairly certain they will give him an extension. I just don't know how many years, what kind of price. I have no idea. I think it will be near that top of the quarterback market there. If that's, you know, three years, four years, five years, whatever the case is. But I do think the Rams will find a way to extend this guy's contract or restructure or whatever you want to call it, because at the end of the day, they need to open up cap space. And a very good way to do it is to extend players that are on your roster. Now, moving on to the next one from at LA Ramsey 46. He said, if the Rams do not get a first round buy, who would you think would be the best matchup for the Rams to play in the first round? And if the Rams don't get a first round bye, of course, that means they're not the first seed. I would tend to assume that 
they're probably not going to finish one through four in that scenario. Now, I think they can still do that, right? You need to win your division to do that. One through four is division winners. Of course, one being the best record, and then five, six, seven are the leftover teams with the best records. I tend to think that right now, when I look at this whole schedule, if the Rams can overtake the Cardinals for the NFC West, then you can host a playoff game. It's a very different kind of scenario. I would think you're praying for somebody like the Saints, maybe, or the Eagles, or you know, one of those seventh ranked teams that just aren't good. But at the same time, I don't know that the Rams can finish in that second seed spot. If they can, then they're gonna have a good matchup. But if they finish in the third seed, you might land with a you know San Francisco 49ers kind of team or a Minnesota Vikings kind of team. And I don't think that you feel great about either of those teams in the first round. So when it comes to what the Rams might do, I mean, I'm hoping that they can land uh, New Orleans Saints, the Philadelphia Eagles, or you know the Washington football team, someone like that. But that would certainly require not only for them to take over the NFC West, but to also take over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for that second seed, which as of right now, maybe not that likely. But that's my hope. I think more realistically, you're probably going to end up playing Someone like the Dallas Cowboys. You might be the fifth seed, the Cowboys being the fourth seed, the NFC East divisional leader, and uh, not an easy game. But at the same time, if you're not finishing one through four, out of the teams that probably will finish there in terms of the Packers, the Bucks, the Cardinals, and the Cowboys, I think you probably want the Cowboys out of all of those teams. I'm just saying, not easy, but I think that probably is the best team for the Rams to match up with. Now, moving on to the second to last question here. My guy from at ESPN underscore Rams underscore takes. He said, how did you like Burgess versus Arizona? What does Allen do better than the backup center? And did D will find his form now? Really good questions in terms of Burgess versus Arizona. Thought he was solid in terms of his coverage. I didn't really focus on him. He did miss a few tackles as well, uh, which is, you know, something always we can nitpick at, but at the same time, thought he was good out there. I definitely want to see more of this guy. I think there's a lot more out there for him. Again, you know, this is not a natural nickel cornerback. So for him to do that 30 or 40 snaps a game, it's not natural. It's going to be very hard and there will be plays where he gets beat. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think his talent warrants his spot out there. And maybe it's not at nickel corner. Maybe it's at, you know, deep safety. Maybe it's where Taylor Rapp might line up. But I think the Rams have to figure it out at some point. I'm going to guess that he doesn't play much going forward. But I thought he was solid. And I really, really want to see him because this is a guy that I think has that kind of potential where you can start to really view him as one of those pieces that you build a defense around, not just being a very good player. Now, I answered a little bit of that Coleman, Shelton, Brian Allen discussion before. Uh, in terms of Darius Williams finding his form, I've said all year, like, this guy's not bad. I don't know why everyone's ragging on him. I know, you know, a lot of people expect him to play to that same caliber as last year, but he was a top seven corner last year. Like, it's hard to do that. It is not easy, and... I think people get spoiled a little bit when they watch Jalen Ramsey. You see the best corner every single week, every single year, and you start to think that guys just have to play at that position or at that level every single week, every single year. But the reality is that is not easy. This guy is special, and he is different. In terms of Darius Williams, I think he's played very solid all season. Yeah, he's given up a few catches here and there, a little bit of yardage here and there, but this past game, he was living in the hip pockets of wide receivers. And I really, really love to see that. It's always good to see that. The tighter the coverage, the more of a chance you're going to have to break up passes. Sometimes you will lose at the catch point. Like we saw Darius Williams lose, you know, a very deep crossing ride, I think, to the left side of the field. I think it was Christian Kirk. I might be wrong there. Then on the right side of the field, you lose another one to AJ Green on an underthrown pass. But if you're there, more often than not, you will win those battles. Sometimes you lose them, but... I thought he really found his form. I really liked his game there. Now, moving on to the final question from at JB underscore peoples. I mean, always shooting over the good ones. He said, who's winning in a 40 yard dash? Greg Gaines or Usain Bolt? Come on now. You know, we're going with Greg Gaines. This man is the fastest nose tackle in football. The closing speed he has on quarterbacks. I love it. Of course. Yes, I am joking. Usain Bolt, the fastest of all time. He's a great character, great athlete, incredible guy. But Greg Gaines, man, super, super important for this defense right now. This guy's been one of the best nose tackles in football. 
so much acceleration, so much speed. It's crazy to see someone that big move that fast, but I guess that's what God-given talent and ability looks like. Aaron Donald shouted him out on Chris Long's podcast, the Green Light Pod. He said, I don't think there's anybody playing the nose tackle position like Greg Gaines right now. That is the highest kind of compliment you can receive. I think Greg Gaines felt pretty good about seeing that one. And in my opinion, this guy has certainly, certainly developed himself as one of the best run stuffing nose tackles and just one of the best nose tackles in football in general. I think the Rams feel really, really good about what they have in Greg Gaines, but not only Gaines, also Sebastian Joseph Day. That's going to do it for this Mailbag Friday episode. Thank you guys so much for always tuning back in here and making us your first daily listen. Make sure to tune back in next week on Monday for our post-game recap. Fingers crossed we have something good to talk about. Big game, Los Angeles Rams, Seattle Seahawks. As of right now, no rescheduling conflicts. Of course, that might change over the weekend, but hopefully they will play. Hopefully the Rams will have a lot of their team back. They need this win, and the Seahawks, of course, fighting for their playoff lives. Just a reminder, you guys can come connect with us on Twitter at QB's MEP, at Locked on Rams, and on YouTube at Locked on Rams. And please subscribe or follow to get our latest episodes, content, breaking news, and a whole lot more.